Hello and welcome to PMQ's Kitchen. I'm Brian Hernandez and I have with me here today John Arena from Las Vegas, Nevada, owner of Metro Pizza and an uh, instructor at UNLV. What is your course called? The course I teach is called History and Culture of Pizza. So what are we going to be making today? Today we're going to demonstrate how we can use our pizza dough and turn it into an artisan bread. Okay. okay? Um, the skills of a pizza maker and the skills of a bread baker are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times pizza, pizza makers buy bread if they're, if they're making sandwiches, if they're serving, if they're serving pizza, if they're serving bread in their restaurants. Mm -hmm. And you have all the tools in your, in your pizzeria to make those things and probably make them, in a, make them better than anything that you can buy. So we're going to use our pizza dough and turn it into a, basically like a baguette okay. or like a rustic Italian bread. All right, great. Okay. And uh, how big are these dough balls? This is a seven ounce dough ball. Seven ounces. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna always remember that we have to handle this dough very delicately. Okay. okay. It is a living. Being. It's alive, and we want to keep it alive. Okay. So we're just gonna shape. We're just gonna pull it out a little bit. Okay. And take the top and pull it over, like we're shaping a torpedo. Okay. And we're gonna turn it around, and do that again. Now we're going to take that dough and we're going to roll it back and forth, exerting, we're going to exert more pressure on the end. All right. Okay. Okay. Ah, got to be gentle. Sorry. Sorry, dough. Okay. You don't want to crush that crumb structure. Okay. Okay. So we want a kind of tapered end here? Yep. Good, perfect. We're gonna have if we just took the, a standard dough ball mm -hmm. and pulled it out and shaped it and threw it and threw it into the oven, it would be much more dense. Okay. Okay. So we're actually gonna create air pockets in that dough. Okay. okay? Great. Okay. But it's not gonna be big air pockets um, because we're gonna let it rise again. Okay. okay. Now, typically, what you can do with these is you can make them if you're gonna use them the same day. You can shape them out put them in a dough box, cover them, and let them rise. Okay. Or you can shape them out the day before. Now you're already going to use fermented dough. You're going to use dough that's ready to, ready okay. to use. Okay, so you're going to give three-day fermentation on your dough, and you're going to take, take them, you're going to shape them, and then you can cover them and put them back in the cooler overnight. When you come back in the morning, you put them right in the oven, and you have fresh bread in the morning. Okay, okay. great. All right, John, so what do we got right here then? Okay, so this is called the couche. Okay, it's used in uh, making French breads or in any type of artisan bread. Okay, typically artisan breads are slow are slow proofed, okay. so you don't use a proof box. You use you use warm air, gotcha. natural air. Okay? okay, so what we're going to do, we don't want this when the dough rises, when the bread rises, we don't want it to slack out. We want it to rise up. Okay, so we're going to put it in the canvas. And then you create a little barrier with the exactly. couche between each one. Exactly. So we're going to fold that up. And that's going to be strong enough to make the yep. bread rise up. Because huh. I've seen over, I've seen proof dough, and that stuff goes where it wants sometimes. <laughs> okay. So let me just set that one right there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put them close together. Okay. okay. And the trend now in artisan bread baking is to have a little flour on top of the dough. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's because most artisan breads are very wet. Okay. Okay. The wetter, the better. And even for your pizza dough, you want to go typically 62% hydration, which is 60, uh, 61, 62% of whatever the flour weight is. So if you're using 50 pounds of flour, you're going to use 31 pounds of water. Gotcha. Okay. And so how long is it going to take for these guys to be ready? Till they're ready. Till they're ready. Okay. They'll let you know. Okay. Um, we don't want it. To, we don't want them to overblow because then when they hit the oven, they're going to they're just going to flatten out. Okay. We want so um, depending on the temperature of your room, if you're at 72 degrees, I would say at least two hours, two to three hours. Okay. Okay. Um, or the best bet is to just let them let them rise in a cooler overnight. And then yeah. you come in in the morning and they're they're ready to go. Ready to go overnight. Our dough has risen sufficiently. Is that right. Right. So we did a three-day initial ferment. Mm -hmm. Then we then we let this dough come out come out of the refrigerator for a couple of hours. Then we shaped it, mm -hmm. 
and we let it we let it rise at room temperature. Typically, for artisan bread, you're not using uh, a proof box. You're doing everything at room temperature. Right. Slower the better. That's where the flavors are coming from. Okay. Okay. And this was our couche, correct? Right. Okay. So now we're just going to gently take these out of the out of the cloth. Now did we uh, flour up the peel there? We did. Same concept yeah. as putting as a pizza. pizza. Okay. And then we're going to make a couple of quick slashes. What the slashes are going to do is going to enable that bread when it hits that hot oven to open up. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So three diagonal slashes. Whatever you like. I like three diagonal slashes. Let's do that. Okay. All right. So how is this oven currently? This oven is at 550. Okay. And that's tip. That's kind of hot for bread. Mm -hmm. But all all the things that we want to do, we want to be able to use the same equipment that we have in our kitchen. Typically, that's around the temperature that most pizzerias okay. run their ovens between 500 and 550. Right. Um, the quicker the quicker bake is going to give you a real a darker, heavier crust. Mm -hmm. um, should be nice. So how long is are these uh, loaves going to take? It's going to take probably about eight to nine minutes. We're going to watch okay. the color really closely. All right, well, we're back with, um, we've let our baguettes cool down. We've cut one open here to let you see how nice and airy it got. These things are great and they smell fantastic. I just can't wait. So what we're going to do now is try to show you a nice, easy, simple recipe, something you can do with this brand new baguette that you just learned how to make. So what are we going to do with this, John? Okay, we're going to make a bruschetta, and we're just going to take, uh, you can do this with olive oil, but we're going to use butter because butter tastes good. <laughs> and we're going to toast these, and when they come out of the oven, we're just going to put a little dollop of pasta sauce on them, okay. and either fresh mozzarella and some basil, and either some fresh mozzarella or some whipped ricotta cheese. Now, is there, um, is there more in that than just ricotta cheese? It looks yeah. like it's got some... It's the same ricotta cheese that we use on many of our other pizzas and calzones. Uh -huh. So it's whipped, it has some parsley, some sea salt, some black pepper. Okay. Great. And a little Pecorino Romano. But that's it. We want to have versatility. We want to be able to make a variety of menu items using the same core ingredients. So right. we're turning those ingredients over. We're maximizing the use of our refrigeration space, uh -huh. our storage space. And we're making sure that all the food is fresh. So we're just going to butter these up, and then we'll set them in the oven, get them nice and toasted, and then we'll be, bring them out, and we'll sauce them up. So now we've got a little bit of color on these. They crust and brown up very nicely. Okay. So we're going to arrange these on the plate. And this is that al dente sauce. This is thicker. Um, it's got more, it's got onions in there, correct? Right. So it's a it's a sweet sauce, but it's not sweet from sugar. It's sweet from the fact that it's a it's a really nice vine ripened tomato, mm -hmm. and it's got onion in it. And the onion is, is sweet. Now, I made it at home, and I'm always switching up the order that I'm putting like the tomato, the mozzarella, and the basil, trying to find the best order keep the basil from coming off or from tomatoes from burning. What's the, is there any standard kind of order for ingredients? Well, we put, like these types? you know, we put some, we put some butter on this bread so it's going to perform a little bit of a barrier so the, the sauce won't, won't seep in. Mm -hmm. So the, by toasting it and putting the butter on there, um, we can then put the sauce right on top of that. Then I'm going to put a little basil on there. I want the basil to bloom when it hits that sauce while the sauce is still warm. Okay. Okay. It smells like, yeah, by ripping it up, you're really releasing the flavor in that. Yeah, basil is so delicate. You know, you always want to use it correctly. I'm just adding a little bit of Pecorino Romano mm -hmm. on there. And we're going to use okay. some of this uh, fresh mozzarella. All right, and this is the Galbani fresh mozzarella, and we put a little bit of salt on it. So we're going to do some of these with that. Some of them we're just going to do with a little bit of ricotta. Okay. Same idea. Very creamy. And you said you whipped this up 
Yeah, I whip it to improve the mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. I'm a big mozzarella fan, but I don't know. I'm excited to try this ricotta on there. Okay. I'm going to dribble a little bit of uh, olive oil over the top. Now, the cheese has been salted. Um, do you traditionally salt Moz Mozzarella, if it's made correctly, is going to taste like milk. Yeah. Okay. okay. If, you wanna, if you want to punch up that flavor a little bit, you're going to punch it up with salt. Okay. But you always want to taste it first because different manufacturers have different salt levels. Okay. Okay, we're ready to rock. And we're just gonna, we don't need milk cheese, just ready to go? No, now we're ready to go. This is awesome. Okay, so here, I'm going to try this one first. And it's great. Okay, how do you like the bread? It's awesome. It's crispy, but it's still soft in the middle. All right, if your dough formula is right, if your pizza dough formula is right, you can do so many different things with it. That's, that's actually great because you wouldn't think that you can use pizza dough to actually make bread and have it taste like bread. So flour, this is just flour, flour, water, it's flour, water, salt, and yeast. Flour, water, salt, and yeast. Well, John, I want to thank you okay. very much for showing so us much. this easy, simple trick. So everybody, go start making some baguettes and try this out because this is spectacular. There's something easy you can add to your menu and you're ready to roll. Thank you very much for visiting us here in the PMQ's kitchen. See you next time.